and previous administration, there was uh, a move to take the mansion director and actually put them over into parks and have the mansion serve as a, as a state park. Um, while we believe that the, the mansion is obviously a, a beautiful uh, state building, I know the governor and the first lady are very passionate about opening it up, letting people come in and see that. It is, it is probably not on the same uh, level when we think of a state park as something like a Bennett Springs or Roaring River or Montauk. And so um, we really felt like, in, in working with the, the director over at DNR, uh, I was more than happy to kind of reconcile that. I think that this actually gives us a little bit more control over the operations at the mansion so that there isn't kind of a, a, a strange or cumbersome um, supervisor relationship with the person who is over there directly working with the governor and the first lady. So um, all we are transferring over, again, is the FTE. We will absorb the cost of that uh, within our own, our own operations. But again, I think that um, kind of when, when that was something that was, was raised to me, I was more than happy to try to accommodate the, the transparency on that piece. Um, and then finally, the, the emergency uh, use of the National Guard. I think, um, unfortunately, some of the years past, this is something that that's, uh, has greater awareness with, with this committee and with the public writ large. Um, just because we have had to call in the National Guard, a lot of that has been around natural disasters. Um, but we also have had to bring them in for civil unrest. Um, they are an unbelievable resource for us. These are men and women that come from you know, districts all across the state, many of them, uh, you know, your constituents, they do fantastic work, uh, but we only want to use them when, when appropriate and when necessary. The other thing I will, I will highlight is that uh, there is usually a formula that comes out from the federal government on when they will basically trigger picking up the, the bill for an emergency or for some kind of an event. I want to say that that right now is around $12 million. So, there is, a, there is a delta, there is a gap, and just understand that in, in the appropriations that we get. It also um, can sometimes create, create issues uh, where if we need something further, but obviously in the past we've been able to work with this committee and others if, if we've needed more um, funds to go in there. One idea that did come up, um, I think, in the past generated out of this uh, committee per was the idea that some of this might roll over and accrue uh, more of a balance so that it would be able to be drawn upon um, in the future. would be happy to, to entertain any of those discussions if the committee wants to continue that um, as well. And then finally on the special audit section, uh, we have utilized that. It's not reflected on, uh, on these documents that it has been in recent years, but we have utilized those before, primarily when there was uh, kind of some transition at department leadership. We wanted to be able to support the new leadership in coming in and make sure that they felt like they had a clean bill of health. We typically try to do that um, by working with our state agencies as well to reduce uh, the cost. And we do have some auditors in, in other functions in state government that we try to utilize for that purpose. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I know I went quickly, but trying to respect your time, happy to entertain any questions. Appreciate that. Mr. Willard, any questions from the committee for the governor's office? None appearing. Appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you. Next up, we've got the state treasurer. The treasurer is about a minute out. Oh, okay. If we can, can we pause sure. for a minute and wait for him to yeah. get in here? Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you. Our vice chairman, a chance to settle in. Well, he's changing into his suit. He's on the elevator. Oh, okay. He's changing to clothes. Great. Vice chairman. Wow. You told me I'm too much. <laughs> Wait a minute. Good morning, Mr. Treasurer. Appreciate good being morning. here this morning. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, how are you? I'm well. Yourself? Very good, sir. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity today to present uh, the State Treasurer's Budget. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, I am going to start with our core, which is the State Treasurer's Office operating expense uh, budget. And we are, if you would 
flip to page number 12, our FTE for 2023 was 50.4, and this year it is staying the same, 50.4, and we are asking for the same exact figure of what we asked last year, which is three, uh, 39665237. So there's no change from the last year's uh, request. Besides that, the others uh, tabs, uh, director of our unclaimed property, Mr. Scott Harper, will continue. Okay. Um, we have a, a couple of NDIs. I'll point those out as we go through. Of course, there's the NDI statewide pay plan, which is in all the uh, all of the budget books that you'll see in front of you. Uh, on page 21, we have. Uh, what's known as the Most Scholars Program. It's uh, a million, uh, 12,899. Page uh, 30. Senator Boy. Good morning. Uh, the Most Scholars Pro Program, could you have somebody come to my office to talk to me about that? I get a lot of questions and sometimes I don't have the answers. So sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, we'll definitely do that. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator, I would be happy to come to your office and discuss that as well. Thank you. Senator Arthur. Thank you. Um, good morning. Can you also provide us a list of schools that have received funds from this program? The I know that it's I know that it's organized through edu those educational. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, is there a way of getting information about what schools, specific schools? We currently don't have that information. I'll, I'll get with who administers the program and, and see what the capabilities of gathering that information are. Okay. Uh, but the EAO is currently maintaining that information. Right. So, okay. So we, we'll, if we'll look into it. there's any way, in, okay. I'd really we'll appreciate into it. it and, Thank and you. Get back with you. Thank you, Senator. Um, then uh, we have uh, page 33, we have the advertising and auction. Uh, this appropriation is 1370000 This is used for advertising unclaimed property owner names and communications with uh, claimants. Page 41 is uh, the core treasurer's information fund. Uh, this is just basically uh, $8,000 appropriation used for dissemination of information and our handling of public, uh, public requests for information. Uh, page 46 is uh, the core for the outlaw checks. It's uh, 13 million. That appropriation uh, allows us to replace uh, checks that have been issued uh, or, or that have been outlawed, stale dated and then people come forward, we pay the constituents out with that money. Um, core abandoned fund claims, that is uh, page 51. This is the appropriation that allows us to pay our unclaimed property claims, and that's 58 million. Then turn to page 56. That's the core abandoned fund transfer. This appropriation is used for two things, it's 17,500,000. Uh, this appropriation allows us to transfer outlaw checks to unclaimed property, and then also allows us to replenish the abandoned fund if it were to ever be overpaid, uh, meaning disbursements outpace receipts. Uh, page 61, the abandoned fund to GR transfer is on page 61. That's $68 million, and this is uh, the statutory, we make our stat statutory transfer from the abandoned fund to GR of any excess funds that are in, in, the, uh, in the fund. And then if you'll go to page 66, we have an NDI uh, to increase that to $40 million. Uh, that is because our receipts are, are up considerably this year, so we're anticipating to need uh, some more capabilities in that line to make a transfer. So, any any rationale behind that? You know, we we've looked at it. Uh, we don't know exactly if it is uh, people catching up after 
COVID, you know, th they're, they're getting into their books and, and finding some things. Uh, but it is, uh, it's been consistent through the last six, seven months that we're seeing that number consistently higher. So we are anticipating having a higher transfer. Um, page 70 is the core link deposit refund. That's uh, $2,500. That is just used for uh, if we ever overpay a bank on link deposit, this allows us to reimburse that bank. Page 75 is the debt offset transfer. That's $100,000. Uh, our role in this is we just allocate the interest in that fund to GR. This line allows us to do that. It's $100,000. If you'll go to page 80, there's an NDI to increase that. Uh, the reason for that increase is we're seeing <coughs> higher interest rates and we want to make sure we have the capacity to transfer as much to GR as possible. Page 84, the biennial to GR transfer. That's a $3 million uh, allocation and that will be done in FY24 or so. And page 89, the state public schools transfer. That is $3 million uh, from the abandoned fund to the state schools, state public schools fund. That is 5% uh, of our net transfers from the abandoned fund to GR. That's how that's calculated. And then you also see on page 94 a $2 million NDI increase on that, and that's for the same exact reason as our earlier AF to GR because it's calculated on that basis. And that is, that is the substance of our budget. If you have any questions. Uh, Wonderful. Any questions from the committee? Uh, it does, does not appear so. Mr. Treasurer? He, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. There's one more item at page 30, which I would just like to bring to your attention, which is the NDI for charter school capital funding, which we requested in the budget uh, upon request from the Charter Schools Association. But that is a $10 million request. Uh, Governor hasn't. Uh, put that in the budget, but that's up to uh, the legislature if they wish to take that up. Senator Searpoy, what's an outlaw check? Uh, an outlaw <coughs> check is the, the state issues the checks, and then after a year, it, it basically becomes stale dated, and we call it outlaw. Okay. And, and that's, that's what it is. Any other questions from the committee? Does not appear so. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Thank you very morning. much. Thank you. Next up, we've got our old friend and colleague, old in a couple of senses, Mr. Wayne Wallingford, Director of Revenue. If you want to make your way forward. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, distinguished chairman and honorable committee members. I'm Wayne Wallingford, the Director of Revenue, and tomorrow will be my 14-month anniversary in the position. And if you ask me what I found out in that 14 months, it wouldn't have taken very long to know that I have a very strong team of subject matter experts, and they're here today to present the budget. And it's always good to see my senator, Senator Rader, from the 27th District. Well, before they begin, I want to outline a few things on our FY24 budget. Uh, you'll see I've present, I have a handout prepared for you. It's rather lengthy. I you know, really encourage you to go back to your office and review that and see all the great things that are happening in revenue over the past year. Uh, so we're submitting our budget requests for $77,141,525 and an FTE of 1,118.55. And we're seeking an additional $1,065,693 in new decisions item, items and then adding uh, spending authority for refunds and distribution. And we're not asking for any additional FTE for FY24. In the handout on page six, you'll see that we have summarized for your quick reference our new decision items and the most notable 
new decision items in the increase of Midori costs for plates, tabs, decals that are produced by the Department of Corrections, Missouri Vocational Enterprises, and a quest for additional postage to cover repeated postage increases by the U.S. Postal Service, and you'll hear more about those in a moment. The Department also supports proposed legislation. A list of those bills are on slide nine in the handout. And then the remaining slides in your handout include some of the calendar year 2022 customer service improvements and some FY23 transformational initiatives. I do want to, uh, for the record, note that I have filled out the witness protection form for your convenience. I know uh, one thing that uh, Mr. Chairman is very interested in is our integrated motor vehicle driver's license system. and. Uh, He's already heard that yesterday that was awarded to uh, Fast Enterprises, who also does that in 17 other states and 80 government agencies. And this will help eliminate uh, our patchwork of systems and simplifies our technology footprint. And then another priority is ours, improved business partnership. This includes how we work with businesses through our tax audit process and how we work with our contract license offices. We're focused on customer improvement, and that was my fo one of my focuses why I went over there. Customer service, having worked for the two largest restaurant corporations in the world, we live and die on customer service. So our vision is to provide every customer the best experience every single time. Now our apartment uh, budget administrator, Amanda Bolin, to my left, and our division leaders will present the budget and provide more explanation on the new decision items. Thank you, Mr. Director. Any yeah. questions before we just jump into the budget? It does not appear so. Amanda, whenever you're ready. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that introduction, Director Wallingford. I am Amanda Bolin, Department of Revenue Administrator. Good morning, Chairman. Let's get started with the de de uh, department decisions. Can you hear me? A little closer? Does that work? All right. Let's turn to page seven. There you'll see our flexibility request form. The governor recommended 10% flexibility between personal service and expense and equipment, which is the same level the department currently has in fiscal year 23. On next on page eight is the fiscal year 24 pay plan cost to continue. The FY24 budget also includes the 8.7 pay raise for employees. This is the same across all agencies. Next on page 19, is the Highway Collections Corps. The Missouri Constitution limits the amount of highway funds the department may spend <coughs> in administering motor vehicle sales and use tax, motor vehicle and driver license fees, and motor fuel tax to 3% of collections. The department's costs to collect highway-related taxes and fees exceed the 3% allowed. The department is appropriated general revenue funds to subsidize the cost of collecting highway funds. When Amendment 3 was passed, the General Assembly established the highway collection budget units so the legislator could see in one area the amount of GR that was subsidizing highway collections. The highway collections funding includes costs associated with all four divisions. The governor's core recommended is 2.8 and 450.59 FT. Of this, 10.9 is funded for the general revenue. Core decreases reflected on page 21 represent one-time funding for fiscal year 24 for the temporary state re license office operation and the operational excellence coordinator. Next on page 26, you will see new decision item, motor vehicle inventory price increase. The department is requesting funding to cover the increased cost of raw material for tabs, decals, license plate sheeting, and disabled placards. A breakdown of cost by inventory type can be found on page 27. As you can see, the governor recommends $539,585 to expense and equipment. Next, on page 33, to new decision item, save program rate increase. The department is requesting funding to cover the state increase from U.S. Department of Homeland Security to use the systematic alien verification entitlements, the SAVE program, which is an intergovernmental information sharing initiative designed to aid licensing bureaus in verifying a driver license applicant immigration status for lawful presence. The electronic verification is mandated by the Real ID Act of 2005 in order to maintain a compliant Real ID document issuance program. 
there you will see the government recommends $71,322 towards expense and equipment. On, next on the MVDL core system, it will show no changes to the core request. The governor recommends $817,887 in 18 FT. Are there any questions? If not, I will now pass to Cheryl Bosch, who will present the department's taxation division request. All right, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Cheryl Bosch, and I'm the division director of taxation. I'm here to present the taxation budget to you today, which begins on page 48. The governor recommends $25,622,989 in 514 FTE. This includes a $6.5 million reduction attributed to the implementation of Senate Bill 153. Core reductions are reflected on page 50 and represent a one-time funding the department received in fiscal year 2022. And I'll provide um, some further information about the implementation of Senate Bill 153 further in my presentation. The taxation division is comprised of five bureaus, which include the processing, collections and tax assistance, field compliance, income tax, and the business tax. The primary responsibilities of the division include processing tax returns, depositing money into general revenue and other state funds, and issuing distributions to local political subdivisions and registering new businesses. During 2022, the taxation division established a program called the New Direction in our Field Compliance Bureau. This program is focused on educating businesses and ensuring they have the ability to comply with tax laws following our audits. Approximately 80% of all sales and use tax audits conducted have received some type of prospective treatment um, during the past year. This initiative has been well received amongst the business community and in conjunction with this new direction, we have also completed tax matrices, which we've posted on our website, and we have 51 of those. These guides have been placed um, there to provide specific categorical item descriptions along with the associated tax, taxability treatment of those types of businesses. And these matrices will aid our customers when making tax-related decisions and guide them towards future compliance. In 2022, the Taxation Division, division also focused a significant effort on implementing several pieces of legislation from the prior preceding sessions. Senate Bill 262 was passed in 2021 and increased the motor fuel tax beginning October 1st, 2021 by two and a half cents per gallon. The tax increased again on July 1st, 2022 to 22 cents per gallon. And the tax will continue to increase every July 1st until the total motor fuel tax is 29 and a half cents per gallon. Included in this legislation is the option for consumers to request a refund of the increase of motor fuel tax paid on motor fuel purchase for highway purposes. The Business Tax um, Bureau issued over 15,000 refund claims for over $423,000, and the average refund claim was $27.86. Senate Bill 153 was also passed in 2021 and required the Taxation Division to take certain actions to help businesses located outside the state pay the right amount of tax to Missouri. This is also known as the Wayfair or Remote Seller Legislation. And some of the actions included in creation of complying for this, it was the tax matrices, which I previously mentioned, and creation of a rate and address-based um, boundary file that we have posted on our website as well. And the department is working on a new interactive map, which will allow our customers additional resources to verify the sales and use tax rates imposed. The taxation division continues to focus on methods to improve customer contacts. In May 2022, the Collections and Tax Assistance Bureau implemented a new cloud-based phone system in our contact center. The improved system enabled us to offer live chats, create a virtual hold, and allow our customers to leave voicemails. The schedule a, uh, schedule a tax call feature also allows customers and tax practitioners to schedule calls from the department from a educated representative several days in advance. More than 23,000 appointments were scheduled in 2022. All these initiatives, coupled with reductions in processing times in all of our other bureaus, have resulted in nearly 100,000 fewer calls. I'm happy to take any questions about the taxation division at this point. Any questions from the committee? <coughs> Does not appear so. Thank okay. you. I'm also here to present the budget for the integrated tax system, which begins on page 102. 
There's no change to this core request. The governor recommends $7,650,000. Each of the tax types initially included in the original integrated tax system designed have now been implemented. These include tire and battery fee, sales, use, employer withholding, individual income, property tax credit, and corporate income tax. In addition, the, sales, the, the system includes functionality to register new businesses, perform collection activities, and provides a portal for our customers to perform various activities related to their accounts. In fiscal year 2022, the integrated tax system accounted for nearly 4 million payments totaling $19 billion and issued more than 1.6 million refunds to Missouri citizens. Approximately 78% of the income tax refunds were issued in less than two weeks, and 97% of them were issued within 45 days. More than 90% of the rules in the integrated tax system are customized to meet Missouri's unique taxing laws. Due to this complexity, the customized code, we have, we have outsourced the support of the system to a vendor. This request for continued funding of the integrated tax system is for ongoing system maintenance, operational support, software maintenance, and system enhancements, which may include adding additional tax types and functions that will enhance our customers' experience. Are there any questions about the integrated tax system budget? I am now going to turn it over to Ken Strum for the Motor Vehicle and Driver's License Division. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Ken Strump, and I serve as the director of the Motor Vehicle and Driver's License Division for the Department of Revenue. I've been uh, in this position for about eight months. Um, since joining Director Wallingford's team. Um, in the next few minutes, I'll be covering material in the budget book beginning on page 125. The division administers the Missouri laws related to titling and registration of motor vehicles, trailers, all-terrain vehicles, marine craft, issues drivers and non-driver licenses, issues also dealer business licenses. We also oversee 173 contract license offices and we consist of three bureaus, the Motor Vehicle Bureau, Driver's License, and License Office Bureau. In addition to the $16.5 million in Highway Corps funding for the division covered by Amanda earlier, the governor recommends no changes to the Motor Vehicle and Driver's License Corps funding of $1,517,167. The Corps funding supports all three of our bureaus, <coughs> personnel and equipment <coughs> and expense. I'd like to highlight a few of the division's successes over the past year. I will start with the Driver's License Bureau highlights on page 130. The Bureau issued or renewed 1,019,758 driver and non-driver IDs, bringing the total IDs to approximately 4.2 million across the state. Of the 4.2 million IDs issued to Missourians, 27% of them are real ID. Missouri received notification from Homeland Security in December that the Real ID effective date has received another two-year extension with a new deadline of May 2, 2025. After hearing numerous concerns of the complexity of obtaining a Real ID, we felt a review of our current policies and procedures were needed. With consultation with the Homeland Security representative, our team has reviewed and made adjustments <clears throat> to the Real ID program and policies to improve our citizen experience when applying for a real ID. I'm happy to report after offering a number of training sessions to our license offices on additional residency documents that can be used to obtain a real ID, license offices are now accepting more types of residency documents, making it much easier for the applicant to obtain a real ID. I'd also like to highlight just, our- Hang on just a second. Senator Washington, you have a question? Hi, thank you for being here this morning. That was really good news. And this is going to be a really turnaround quick, fast request. We're having a voter ID clinic in my community on Saturday. Can I please get a list today of what is acceptable for them to get the real ID? Sure. Um, so that as we are educating people as to how to transfer to getting the proper ID for voting purposes, we know what will be acceptable. Thank you. I'd also like to highlight our driver's license call center in reducing our call wait time for each of the last three years. 
In fiscal year 2020, our wait time was a little over 10 minutes, but last year our wait time was reduced to a little bit under five minutes. Next, I'd like to highlight our license office bureau beginning on page 136. The motor vehicle and driver's license Motor vehicle and driver license transactions in 2022 totaled about 8.5 million in our 173 contract license offices. In calendar year 23, the number of transactions processed by license offices will increase to do, due to two efforts of the department. First, we're going to allow like license offices to perform renewals of registrations through phone in renewals. Agents in the field can complete the registration through a phone um, with the applicant email and faxing uh, necessary documents to the office and, and complete the registration. Secondly, initiative, initiative is in place that have the Missouri online motor vehicle renewal process uh, by the local license offices versus the department. This effort will potentially return over 400,000 transactions to the local license office, resulting in faster processing times and allow central office staff to be utilized to increase processing timeline for more complex transactions and offer more training to license offices. And we hope the online uh, are returned to the license offices about mid-March. So in a couple of weeks, they'll, they'll be uh, having those. Um, next, I'd like to highlight some of the accomplishments of the Motor Vehicle Bureau beginning on page 141. Uh, the Bureau issued 1,948,832 titles for fiscal year 22, bringing our total number of active titles to roughly 13 million. 92% of the FY22 titles were issued to the customer in less than six days, with a majority of those issued in three days. We also issued and renewed 4,038 business licenses for dealers to sell ve vehicles. Missouri currently has over approximately 6,500 active dealer business licenses. The Bureau also issued 1,549,232 registrations for fiscal year 22. This is very similar to the FY21 numbers. Senator Sherpoy? Thank you. I don't know what page this would come in, but we are now trying to pass where car dealers can issue titles and collect taxes and all that uh, at the point of sale. What impact will that have on on your fee offices do you have any pr uh, projections on that um, we we, we uh, think we've completed some fiscal notes on it and we, we could get that back to you okay thank you I, I have a quick question um, when when they buy their their car can they make payments now like make payments towards their sales taxes or is there a process for that now, or they'd have, they have to pay them in full? Currently, they have to pay them in full. Okay, thank you. Sorry, one more quick question. That's not on you. Okay, thank you. I now turn it over to Maria Sanders from our general counsel's office. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, morning. members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Maria Sanders. I'm the general counsel with the Department of Revenue. In addition to the highway collections that Amanda discussed a bit ago on page 154, the governor is recommending, excuse me, <clears throat> is recommending $3,494,016.62.80 FTE in core funding to support continued operations. The General Counsel's Office provides legal advice, representation, and investigative support to the Director of Revenue and all the divisions within the department. Among other things, uh, the attorneys within the GCO represent the department relate in matters related to taxation, motor vehicles, and the licensing of drivers, contract issues, personnel matters, and records requests. The GCO also has two bureaus that investigate unlawful activity related to the taxation, motor vehicles, and dealers and drivers licensing programs. In addition, our office assists law enforcement and local prosecutors with state law violations related to DOR's many programs. Uh, thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the committee? 
does not appear so. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Brooklyn Wasser, the Division Director for the Administration Division. Good morning, Chairman, members of the committee. I am Brooklyn Wasser. I'm the Director of Administration within the Department of Revenue. The administration division is comprised of the director's office, communications, legislative team, human resources and total rewards, financial services and general services. The administration division supports the revenue collection in motor vehicle and driver licensing programs by performing accounting, cash management, procurement, mail operations, central supply inventory, receiving, warehousing, archival, delivery, motor pool, facility services, human resources, form development, and training. The division also coordinates all operational excellence initiatives throughout the department and encourages all team members to identify efficiencies and gain the skills necessary to lead projects and change initiatives. Please turn to page 179 for administration division core. There are no changes to the core. Additional costs are included in the highway collections core Amanda went over previously. The department also oversees a child support collections contract in conjunction with the Department of Social Services. This funding totals $5,027,748.2.62 FTE. If you'll now turn to page 191, you will see the postage core. The governor recommends $3,284,316. The department annually incurs postage expenses for processing more than 12 million pieces of outgoing mail, including refunds, driver license, motor vehicle and marine renewal notices, motor vehicle titles, collection and enforcement notices, and statutorily required pieces of certified mail. The department's outgoing mail volume is the largest in state government. The department programs its automated mail to realize the maximum postage discounts. The department also utilizes the OA central mail services for non-automated mail. Additional costs are included in the Highway Collections Core. On page 195, you will see a new decision item request for the postage rate increase. The department is requesting $454,786 to cover the increased cost in postage, which is the same as the governor's recommendation. As shown at the bottom of the page, effective July 10, 2022, the U.S. Postal Service increased mailing rates for letters an average of 7.5 percent, postcards 10 percent, and certified mail rates 6.5 percent. It averages $4.20 to mail a certified piece of mail. The department diligently looks for ways to decrease its mailings, but with continued increases, we need funding so that the mailing of titles, driver licenses, refund checks, and notices are not negatively impacted. Are there any questions? Let's find out. Any questions from the committee? It does not appear so. Okay, I'm going to hand it back to Amanda to go through the refunds and distributions. Thank you, Ms. Wasser. Chairman, would you like for us to go over all refunds and distributions or just the highlighted ones from last year? What I was going to, unless the committee has a different opinion, I was going to say uh, since the last half of this book is all just refunds, if there's any differences, changes, noteworthy items feel free and if, obviously if anyone has any specific questions as we go through but just hit the hit the changes or differences will do mind. all right thank you all right let's turn to page 211 new decision item port aim zone the department is asking for an increase in appropriation authority for anticipated increase in distributions on page 218 to the time zone new decision item the department is required by statute to deposit 25% of the state tax withholdings on new jobs with targeted and targeted industrial manufacturing enhancement time zone for distribution for the zone board for the purpose for the purpose of completing infrastructure projects to promote economic development in the region. Okay, and then on page 239, new decision item of motor fuel distribution. Senate Bill 262 increased the current tax rate from 17 cents per gallon to 0.295 cents in July 1st, 2025. The additional tax is collected and must be distributed appropriately to cities and counties. The department is asking for an increase appropriation authority for the anticipated increase in distributions. Okay, and now on page 320, new decision item, park sales transfer 
increase. The park sales tax collections have been continuing to increase over the last six years. The current appropriation authority is 375,000. It is insufficient to cover the calculated transfer amounts. The department requests to increase appropriation authority to meet future con um, required transfers. The department submitted a supplemental request in fiscal year 23 because the appropriation authority was less than calculated transfer. Okay, next on page 331. It will be new decision item soil and water sales tax transfer. Just like parks and sales, the soil and water state collections have continued to increase over the past six years. The current appropriation authority of 375 is insufficient to cover the calculated transfer amounts. The department submitted a <coughs> supplemental request for fiscal year 23 to cover the transfer shortfall. Okay, and then our last new decision item on page 362 is motor fuel tax transfer increase. As with motor fuel distributions and refunds, the department also is asking for an increased appropriation authority for motor fuel transfers to allow for anticipated increased transfers to the state highways and transportation departmental fund. That is all we have, Chairman. Thank you, Amanda. <coughs> Thank you, Director. Any other questions from the committee? The Chair's got one just quick inquiry, and, and Director, if you need to get back to me on this. It's fine, um, but we've had some conversation in here about the transfer that is not happening to the Senior Development and Growth Fund that is statutorily required as far as I read it. Can you, can you give me some insight there, some explanation as to why that's not happened? Actually, that's a bill that I carried. In I the thought Senate it might have been. been. Yes, so I was very interested in that. So I was surprised to hear that hadn't been happening. Uh, we'll give you the full details that we have. Sure. We've prepared something, but in a... In a nutshell, I think it was uh, only a line item of one dollar in there, so there was nothing to transfer over for us. But okay, so that's confusing to me because this is hang on because this is um, this is part of the insurance two percent tax that's collected correct. on yes. insurance policies. Yeah. Correct. Most of it goes to school, and then this pulled off for them, and the rest went to general revenue. Right, but yeah. I guess what I'm what I'm confused about is why why the why the transfer just hasn't been happening at all. Um, I can answer that. Sure. We currently do not have transfer authority, so therefore we cannot do the transfers until we have transfer authority. So you need us to give you the authority to transfer the money into the Senior Development and Growth Fund, even though it is statutorily required that you make the transfer. Have you asked for the transfer authority? Um, I will have to get back to the crew on that. Okay. It, it, it's my intention, as long as the committee doesn't have an issue with this, to grant you the authority to make the transfer into that fund as you should, as far as I read the statute, as you are <laughs> required to do. Okay? okay. Yeah, I worked on that bill for three years. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll be working with you then. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Senator Bain, anything? Fantastic. All right, none appearing. That will conclude today's hearing. Appreciate you guys being here. Thanks.